Hello everyone, my name is Liz Million and I am a children's book illustrator and author. I am here again to do a wonderful little tutorial all about drawing things from the Solway Coast. A-O-N-B means Area of Outstanding Natural Beauty. And it is a beautiful part of the world, Cumbria, now. We have done all sorts in our other tutorials. This tutorial is going to be all about the salt marshes. Now, lots of animals thrive in the salt marshes near the estuary. And estuary is where the river meets the sea, so it's a mingling of salt and fresh water. It is a abundant with wildlife not all of the wildlife you can see we've got some very secretive characters that lurk about in the waters we've got warm-blooded mammals we have things like the harbour porpoise which is a bit like a dolphin we've got otters we've got marshland cattle as well so today we are going to be drawing all sorts of things including one of my favourite little animals that I love to spot in um, salt marshes. Now, also in the estuaries, you get all different wading birds and migratory birds who try and get all the little worms and the seashell uh, creatures as well. Now, I've done quite a few sort of seals before in my time. Have a look at this picture here. Now, I know this is a little bit far north, but look, we have owls Solway as well. Look, this is how I draw seals with a very strange shape. Just like we did with our um, Natterjack toads, we're gonna start with a simple shape and we're gonna build up on it, okay? So if you're worrying, thinking, I'm not very good at drawing, it really doesn't matter because I'm gonna show you how to draw some cows with very simple shapes and we're gonna work our way up to a bit tricky. Now, I love doing animals. Now, have a look here. I have done this sheet. This sheet took me ages and do you know what I drew it with? I did it with a pencil, a biro and some marker pens and look, there is a leopard seal. Now, leopard seals are very different to our little seals that we get in the salt marshes. Now, we are going to be doing some drawing today, so grab your pencil, grab your paper. You might need some coloured pencils or crayons or whatever you like to work with. And the beauty of a tutorial is, if I go too fast, you can just pause and rewind, okay? So get your pencils ready, guys, because we're going to do a draw along. Our first animal is going to be a very important mammal and this mammal is found all over the salt marshes and you can see here my Billy and the Bull book <laughs> he ended up going on a skateboard he went to the movies but there we have a sort of potato shape okay so my potato shape first of all before we start drawing I've got fine liners I've got my pencil and I'm just going to push my crayons to one side because I'm going to show you really really quickly all the different shapes you can do for a cow so we can do that way that way we can do this way which is a bit I don't even know what that is we could do a peanut we could do another peanut Okay, we could also do a cup on its side. We could do a long square. Okay, you don't believe me, do you, that we can get so many cows out of here? So look, la 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 la, very quickly. And I'm going to choose which one I want to do because I know that we like doing cartoony ones, but we want it to look cute as well. Now, I love drawing big bulls. Now, the cattle that herd on the um, salt marshes, they have the life of Riley. They eat gorgeous, fresh grass. And the sheep, oh, that's a nice one, isn't it? We're quite like that. That's also good for a dragon, but we're not talking about dragons today. The sheep and the cattle that graze on the salt marshes. Sorry, as I was saying, first of all, their poos are really good for keeping the land really fertile. Hello, I like those little cheeky eyebrows. Oh, look. If he's a bull, like, right, okay. But also, they eat a lot of vegetation, which keeps all the grass quite nice and short. And this is great for all the animals that live there. So if you've got like a wading bird, it keeps their habitat really, really um, fresh and good for living in, basically. Well, that's quite a nice one. Oh, I like that. This is a peanut shape, look. And you can see I'm just mucking about here. Moo. Our little cow doesn't look very smiley. So I'm wondering if we could do it like that. So basically, this is what an illustrator does. We work out what's going to be the easiest and the most nicest to draw. 
So I quite like this one. I think I might go for this one. And um, this is quite a good size as well, this sort of shape here. Move. You can have a little go if you wanted to have a go. Uh, right, I think, I think this is going to be the one, the peanut. Okay. There we go. Right, so on your piece of paper, over here, I'm going to draw a peanut shape. Now, peanuts, really tricky to draw. So if you don't get it right first time, you can always rub it out. And you can see I'm just doing this really lightly. So if I needed to rub it out, I could do. Okay, so once you've got that, I'm just going to move my uh, pens here. Now we could do one eye or two eye. Now I think we're going to go for two eyes because I think they look quite sweet. So these guys are really, really important to the ecosystem. There we go. Oh, I think this is looking quite sweet. Yay! Okay, now <laughs> we could have been drawing a sheep. I'm not I'm not really into sheep. I love goats, but so look, we could do that's quite nice, isn't it? I quite like that. But look, if you wanted to do a dinosaur, <laughs> this is the beauty of the peanut. Look, it's a dinosaur. Now I'm not sure we get dinosaurs at Salt Marshes. And also look, dragon. Oh yeah, no. Stop talking about dragons. I love dragons, but we're drawing like um, cattle. So we're looking at ears like that. Again, if it's tricky, you can always just rewind it like that. Now I know cattle have got quite big bodies, but they're also quite square. So I'm gonna come around here. I'm gonna draw a big square body. Now you probably weren't expecting to draw a cow today but actually you can always spot them on the salt marshes so I thought we can't leave them out they're really important I could put a little bit of curly hair on now their legs got quite short legs depending on the breed there are thousands of different types in fact there's Solway cattle when I looked it up because obviously I have to research my videos I have to look at what the animals look like when we're drawing them because I can't get over to Solway to draw from life but you could you could easily take your uh, sketchbooks to do it okay now if you wanted to do a cow you could draw others I think I'm just going to leave it as a ball so once I've got that I'm going to go round it in my pen so I'm going to speed this bit up Now we're going to have a go at doing something really unusual now. Um, we're going to have a go at doing a harbour porpoise because they are often spotted around the Solway Firth. And I know they don't really come right into the salt marshes, but you can always see animals from where you are um, standing salt marshes in the sea. So what I thought I could do is try and draw one. Now I've done loads of dolphins 
in my time. And I always start them with a banana. <laughs> so if you wanted to draw a really weird banana shape. Now we're not going really long like a bottlenose dolphin, even though some bottlenose dolphins are spotted in the waters around Solway. We're going to do a harbour porpoise, which is part of the cetacean family. And they have got a really blunt head like that. And then they've got a really, no beak really. And I want them to be a little bit smiley because otherwise it just looks really weird. <laughs> now, that is looking a bit like a weird kind of sausage. And then he's got some lines coming around here. Now, if yours just looks like a sausage at the moment, then mine does as well. <laughs> and we're going to try and draw his tail on like that. Now, really, it wouldn't curl round like that, but we're using our artistic license so we can sort of make bits up a little bit. Now, he doesn't have a proper fin like a dolphin. He wouldn't have a proper fin like that. Shark's fins are more pointy. So we are doing this sort of a fin and it comes up and down a bit like a triangly fin. I bet it's really exciting seeing one of these. There we go. So they love all the fish around our coast and they've got really cute little beady eyes. Now, do we want to do a cartoony one or do we want to do a sort of realistic -y one? What do you reckon, guys? So if I was doing a cartoony one, we would do the children's, but we would do like a nice friendly eye. See, I think that looks quite nice compared to that one. So what I'm going to do is if you want to do a realistic eye, draw that one. But I think I want to do sort of quite cute and cartoony eye like that. And put a little smile on him as well. Now this looks very, very weird. I'm going to get my hairspray. Let's give it a quick squirt. Now, it's sort of got grey on. Now these tutorials are really tricky. But if you wanted to muck about with putting your crayon on its side, now they are this colour. So they are camouflage in the water. So lots of hunters are camouflaged and lots of prey are camouflaged too. So they're trying to all out hide each other. And then it's got a little dark bit here. So you can see I'm doing this really sort of gently. I'm not pressing really hard. I'm trying to figure out where the colour is going to go. Now I'm working from um, an illustration that someone has done, like um, a scientific illustration. Okay, now if I could do this another time, uh, I would probably sort of work it all out and I would try and think about it a little bit more. But this is just a sort of quick thing. If I was doing like a book about it, for example, I would get loads of different angles and I would spend time getting the face right. But I think we've done we've done quite a nice job here. And they have got very unusual faces, especially compared to our bottlenose friends. Our bottlenose friends are like that, aren't they? So that looks quite cute. It's very sneaky, that little eye. But I do like these sorts of strange things. And do you know what? It's such a good idea to challenge yourself. So I've got my black pencil crayon. Now I'm happy with that little mouth. Oh, he looks really cute now. Put that smile on. So sometimes you think, it's going wrong. And then sometimes you think, oh, it's going right. And sometimes things look worse before they look better. Okay, and it's like anything. It's like decorating your house or <laughs> things like that. You think, oh no, what have I done? And then in the long run, you think, oh, actually, yeah, it was worth all the mess, all the worry and all the going wrong. So if you didn't want to draw this, I totally understand. But, you know, it's not the end of the world. And you know what? If you go wrong, it's not really going wrong. It's your brain learning. Now, you sort of got loads of little dots here as well. So I've got my pencil on the side. I'm doing a really weird mark making pattern. If you're not sure about that pattern, Practice. Put that on a piece of paper first. Okay, so I'm trying to do all the different sorts of mammals you would get. Okay, so this is obviously 
a mammal because he would have a little blowhole up here somewhere. If you want to draw the little blowhole, you can do. If it was a shark, like a fish, you would have gills. So look, I'm just putting some little dots on here and I don't think they really jump out of the water. Lots anyway, not like a, a show dolphin. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is just draw some wiggly lines like that. So you can see I'm not really doing a lovely tropical Irish sea. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit chilly. And I'm not putting like treasure or anything on. But what I might do is put a little rosy cheek on there just to make him look a bit cute. If you want to put eyelashes on, you can do. And this is our harbour. Purpose. Or porpoise. Like a tortoise. There we go. And I'm going to put my name on. That is definitely the weirdest one we are doing today. Now we're going to do something cute this time because I don't think the cow or the porpoise <laughs> were particularly cute. And we are going to use my favourite shape. And I'm going to go this way this time. And I hope we can get it all on. So we've got our potato here. We are drawing a little otter. Okay, so I'm going to put our little potato on. You can see the sketchy line is appearing a lot today. Uh, I want to put him on his like two legs to make him look like he's a children's book character. And you know what? We're going to exaggerate it. So we're going to put his little paws up like that. Okay, so you have a look at your own hand waving. Look at my filthy hands. <laughs> going to give him a little thumb there and again because he scrabbles around the salt marshes around the estuary they have little claws to pull them out onto rocks and our bird that we're going to draw next has got little claws as well and we want him to look quite casual so imagine if this was a book character you could write a story about the little otter that lived near the estuary with his family OK, so we haven't even thought about his face yet, have we? So we're not going to put clothes on. OK, I'm going to put his legs on here. I'm going to move my page up a little bit so you can see his little feet. So they've got very distinct sort of feet. But what I've done here is I've put some... They look a bit like birds' feet, don't they? But I'm going to put them in more of a sort of... Well, they've got webbed toes, I think. That's probably the the main way of explaining them because they are watery mammals and they've got very big thick tails for swimming so out of the water some of these animals look very strange like that so we've got our little character here and we might just draw him on here now when I did one for another project he looked gorgeous and I spent a lot of time getting him right but today we're just doing very sort of quick um, sketchy drawings and we could use a realistic sort of style like we did with the puppets or we could do a cartoony style so what I'm going to do is draw his little nose on and if you wanted to do that again you could do that with a V like that okay and then I'm just going to shade it in with my pencil so you can see I'm doing it really really gently again now they've got loads of whiskers which we can do later on we don't need to draw those on and they've got really sweet little mouths and they go up like that. Now they've got very, very sharp teeth for eating fish with and eating shellfish. And I think we're going to do some different eyes. So I'm going to do far apart eyes. And I'm going to do a big circle in there. And another circle underneath. Now that is a very cartoony eye. So you do a figure of eight like this and if you want to do eyelashes on you can do now i have not drawn eyelashes today so i'm doing a mummy otter <laughs> oh that is cute so there we go so you could always put a bit of hairspray on but actually ask your grown-ups first uh, i'm going to come around this eye with my pen i'm gonna don't think i'm gonna speed up this time 
Okay, so you can see those eyes. I've got my figure of eight. And don't worry if you haven't got pens at home. You can just use your pencil card. Just use what you want. When I was little, I didn't really have loads of fancy stuff. Now I'm an illustrator. I've got too much fancy stuff. And look, this is just like a permanent pen that I've just picked up from uh, my drawing pot. So I've got lots of pots here. Look, this is my drawing pen pot. So my um, family don't use it because sometimes I come in and someone's been writing a report with it. <laughs> and I'm like, that's my best drawing pen. There we go. So this is looking cute. I'm going to put a little line like this. Now these hands are weird to draw. You can make them look webbed. Put little claws on. Don't put big, really scary claws on because uh, it might look a bit terrifying. And really, they do stand on their back legs, but they're very, very inquisitive. And the other day, I was at the zoo, Northumberland Zoo, for my birthday, filming. And I saw five otters, and they were absolutely adorable. And there were such characters. And they were standing on their little legs like this looking like a little meerkat, looking at what was going on. They're very, very inquisitive and nosy, but they're very, very shy. So there's probably a good chance you will never, ever see one of these at Solway because they are so shy and so timid. And it makes sense for them to be not around man. They're quite happy to live in a very quiet place without any sort of distractions. And it's not like a fox where they you know, eat our rubbish and things. <laughs> they don't really need us. So look, I've forgotten a little bit on his little foot there. Okay, so again, peachy pink, just to make him look cute or her cute. I really love those eyes. They're really cute. Uh, I've got my thinner pen for whiskers. Now things that hunt under the water normally have lots and lots of whiskers. I have got my brown here and our next character is going to look very similar to this. And I'm going to show you the brilliance of the potato again. So as I said earlier, there are lots of warm blooded mammals that live on the Solway coast. But there's also lots of cold blooded ones like that Natachuck toad. <laughs> And lots of insects as well and they all live side by side and they eat each other so this character here is a very very ferocious ferocious fisher so like all the fish at the coast there we go so very very cute i'm going to put my little background on so i've got a darker green this time just to show you the sort of difference and i'm sure the grasslands on the uh, marshland have got different shades depending on the time of year and of course they'll have different flowers that all the insects live on so there we go i'm not going to put too much worry into the background it's just a sort of scene setting there we go okay so there's our otter i'm going to get my pencil i'm going to write otter on obviously otter and i'm going to put my name on and if you want to put some little lines, he's waving. Hiya. <laughs> he's saying hello. Okay, so you could always pause that if you wanted to do it slowly. And this is going to be super quick with a potato. Okay, so these little lovely animals are going to be a seal. So I'm going to just do an adorable seal because a lot of seals aren't really um, that cute looking. But this one is just going to be really sweet. And you get them near the estuaries. So there we go. So when you're drawing a sort of seal body, I'm going to draw his little body coming round. And they tend to swim really, really fast. But when they're on the land, they're sort of very <laughs> clumsy. A bit like penguins, anything really that is brilliant at swimming is generally a little bit clumsy on land. And walruses are the same, seals, otters, all sorts. 
So I've got like a weird sort of shape here. You can see I'm just doing a very, very quick sketchy drawing. Okay, now face-wise. Oh, we could do a really cute one, couldn't we? So look, faces, if we wanted to have a little practice, we could draw big eyes. That is very cute, very cartoony. We could do really small eyes. Hey, yeah. <laughs> There we go. I'm not sure actually, because I don't want it to look too similar to our otter. And they've got quite roundish faces. So what I would do as an illustrator, I would do loads of different, ah, right. That mouth is very similar to that otter, but I think that is the one, definitely. So we're gonna draw our little V-nos just like we did with that otter, but they've actually got nostrils. I'm not sure if otters do. They've got ostril, nostrils that close up, they've got little flaps. So when they go under the water, they don't get water up the nose like me and you. Ooh, I hate getting water up my nose. It's when you jump in the swimming pool, you always have to be, uh, you always have to put your fingers over your nose. <laughs> Pinch your nose, that's what I meant to say. Again, lots of whiskers. So this is generally a little bit like that otter. Okay, but this is a nice quick sort of drawing and they have little bits here. Now, if this was a sea lion, sea lions have got little claws on. I'm not sure about seals, actually. I think it's just sea lions. And we want to make it look like he is in the rocky area. So this is very, very sweet. I think I'm going to put my hairspray on just because... Um, I'm going to go around it with a very skinny sort of black pencil crayon. So there are these little nostrils. Like that. So I want to give him a little hairy ziggy zaggy line. Again. <laughs> and again, they spots and all different markings change depending on their age. So if they're juveniles, if they're young, they might have more fluffy fur. This could be a baby one, couldn't it? Ooh, or you could do a, a lovely story about a little baby seal getting lost or found or rescued. Lots of animals get stranded, don't they? So maybe he's gone too far and he's ended up at the salt marshes surrounded by cows. Or maybe he goes far too far out to sea and a porpoise helps him. So this is how we would write a story. So just like my dog, he's got lots of little dots there. And if he's a boy, he might have bigger eyebrows. Hello. And if you want to do a girl, you could always put your little eyelashes on. So we aren't doing realistic pictures. We're doing sort of uh, illustrations which is a little bit different so you could do really realistic ones and I when I was at university used to draw loads of realistic um, artwork just to get my skills together okay so there we go we've got our lovely character and it's got lovely little rosy cheeks there we go so very very sort of Easy peasy kind of character, and it didn't take me too long. If you wanted to pause it, you can do now. We are going to do a very messy character, so I'm going to clean everything away and I'm going to dig out my um, chalks now. So I'll put a little bit of colour on there because he's not white, he's not like a white seal. There we go. Okay, I'm going to put seal. <laughs> and I'm going to put my name on. There we go. So I've decided to keep the most important character to last because this little creature here is a wading bird 
and they are oyster catchers, which is the logo of Solway Coast. So I've decided to keep the messiest till last. Now, this lovely ad for set there, but this is our oyster catcher here. And you can see when I read my lovely RSPB book, it's got loads of information about every different type of um, bird in here. And I love the way that every bird has got a different type of beak, depending on where they live and what they eat. And our little oyster catcher, obviously, used to catch oysters but actually the fa fact is the cockles and the shellfish have actually declined in years so they go inward to the salt marshes and the farmlands to uh, find foods so there he is look he's using his long beak um, to get a shell there and he's going to crack it on the rocks and eat the little creature inside so there's our character here he's going to have a lovely orange eye he's got a long bill and it's like an orangey color a bit like <laughs> my nail varnish now have a look here this is the sort of outline i would normally do if i was doing a children's book character like a swan and this is another character this is another sort of wading bird here it's not really a wader it's more of a, a sort of um swanny kind of character so on here look we've got the oyster catcher here so i like to do it with pencil first so i've just got some nice paper here i've got some very very messy chalky things which i'm going to put over there and I've got a pencil here and I've got a lovely orangey red there as well. Now, you don't need fancy things. If you want to just watch this part, you can do because you have drawn some quite tricky things today. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out um, the shape of my oyster catcher. So he's got quite a rounded head, as do many birds. And I'm not really looking forward to drawing this because my brain doesn't really know how to draw <laughs> an oyster catcher just like I was a bit nervous about that natter jack toad and you know what it turned out all right now sometimes on the photographs they've got long necks and sometimes when they're resting because they rest for hours they've actually got quite um quite sort of short necks because obviously they bring their necks in now we could have drawn it flying like the logo but I wanted to do more of a, a sort of natural um, stance so he's actually standing okay and I'm probably just gonna wing it to get it I'm just gonna just make those legs up a little bit with my orange crayon I think but I need to get the eye right now he's got beautiful eye and it's sort of orange like that so if I'm not happy with that beak if I think that beak is too broad I would sketch that out like that and then inside that would be dark. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop that. Okay. I'm not going to spray any hairspray just yet, but I'm going to get my orange eye. And this felt tip is really, really bright, but it's very wet. So I'm going to give it a little minute to dry before I put the black eye over there. Now he looks evil, but it's all going to come together. And when you are an artist, it's all about finding what materials you like to use. It's all about experimenting and it's all about going wrong as well. So I haven't practiced this this morning. This is me just going for it. But as I say, I've been an artist for a long time and I'm gonna get his legs right. I was gonna use my chalky pastels, but I think I'm just gonna draw it. Okay, now if you're trying to follow along at home, I apologise. This is really tricky. You know how there was loads of different shapes we could use for the cow? This isn't the case with an oyster catcher. I could not think of an easy kind of shape, really. Yeah, we could have used a potato, but I wanted to do like a realistic, sort of beautiful um, character. Okay, so they've got like a little sea gully kind of legs and these are obviously seabird legs and they've got little um little claws on the end which we will draw in the detail later on it doesn't matter if that knee's bigger than the other i am not going to worry about it okay so now this eye is dry i'm going to get my um pencil here and this is a very waxy pencil crayon and you can see I'm going around that white bit. And that looks lovely. Well, I'm really pleased with that. <laughs> pleased and relieved. Now, normally I would be drawing a really like cheery face on like, hi, 
it, guys. But I want to do a realistic one, and this is exactly what I would do. Okay, so we're going to get daring now with this black. <gasps> now, this is filthy. Look, it's already made my hands filthy already. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lean on my bit of white paper. Yes, the white paper. Oh, wow, look. Now, you could have a go with doing this with crayons. Now, I really do not like working with smudgy smudgy smudges like this because it just makes my desk filthy and I am not sort of messy artist you know me I like my pens and I like to be very neat but I do like to sort of be a bit arty farty sometimes <laughs> now he's got a lovely white chest as well so I'm just gonna do a wiggly line like that Oh my word, look at all that. Now, when I blow that, that is going to go all over my desk, which I like to keep neat. So I'm not going to blow it across my desk. I'm going to put it in the bin. <laughs> now he's got a black wing coming around here. Now they are different in winter. They've got different um, feathers in when they are young, when they are juveniles. And there's a lot of white around the back, but we can't really see that here. And there's a little bit of tail here. And then what I would do is I'd put some little lines like that. So I'm going to put a bit of smudgy smudging here. Oh, wow, that's quite good, isn't it? I bet you're dying for me to blow that all over. So I'm going to put a bit of black here. Then with my finger, I'm going to put some shadow on here. You can see that I'm putting a bit of shadow here. Now, I'm going to have to go and take this whole picture to the bin. I will be back. So, it just occurred to me you couldn't quite see those legs. Because <laughs> I didn't think I was going to go that long. Um, now, we've got our character here. Look, I'm going to just start smudging a little bit in. So, there you can see his lovely little feet now. And you can see... Ugh... There we go. Now, some of you like chalks and pastels, which is great. And it's really nice if you experiment with what you've got. So this is like a black chalk. You could do it with uh, a pencil crayon. You could do it with charcoal. It's essentially what it is, charcoal. And I just feel really with <laughs> with charcoal. <laughs> but it's quite a good idea to have a wet wipe to hand as well, because if you get it on your clothes, it's rubbish. Now, <gasps> blow that away. I'm going to get my word of hairspray on that and I'm going to let that dry a little bit. Now, I'm thinking he might actually have a bit of a longer tail um, than that because on some of the photographs that I'm looking at, he's got a longer tail, but I think I'm just going to leave it. Do you think he needs a longer tail? Yeah, I do actually. Yeah, he's going to have a tail a bit longer, which I will do in a minute because I've just got that off my fingers. Now, he's going to be in our beautiful salt marshes. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is do some sort of greenery and salt marshes are just thriving with different animals and habit it's a brilliant habitat for all different animals as we've discussed already. So I'm gonna do my green like very nice and then I'm gonna press down to make it look like he is in the long marshy grasses which is really good for insects, which is where he will find a lot of his food. So if we imagine that the water is just behind here, because it does actually come round like this, there's little pockets of water. So I'm just putting a little bit of background on, because we want it to be about our main character, our bird here. And then I've got a darker crayon here. So I think that orange really, really stands out. It's really a striking bird. And I'm always excited because I see them when I'm driving along near fields, farmers' fields. They seem to do quite well in farmlands and you can see and hear them all screeching away. They are very noisy, noisy little critters. And I've got my sort of black here. So I'm just going to put bit of water maybe going along this way so we've gone that way now we're going this way and if you wanted to draw 
bit of background like that. And you could also draw lots of other little oyster catchers in the distance if you wanted to, because they're rarely on their own. They're always in a flock. So if I wanted to do one flying, um, I could do one here. I think what I might do is just put um, a sort of log or like a stand thing. And you could maybe draw another one over there in the distance if you wanted to. Now I'm going to go around here now that hairspray is dry. And I'm going to get my little bit of paper so I don't smudge it. So what I want to do is come around here. You see it's really standing out and I'm going around it. I'm going to tidy this eye up a little bit because I think I've smudged over there a bit. And you don't want it really, really flat. You want it sort of a little bit scritchy scratchy. <laughs> okay, we've done a lot of scritchy scratching today with our furry mammals. But if you have a look, I'm just doing a very, very sort of, sort of, uneven line so I'm not doing a straight line like that but I will do a straight line on these legs so now you can see these lovely legs now if you're having a go at this at home well done for having a go this is not an easy thing to draw <laughs> and I am really relieved even though look I have done one knee bigger than the other but you know what, it doesn't, it's not obvious to anyone. No one's going to say, hey, that knee's bigger than the other. Because <laughs> everyone's going to be like, oh, look, it's an oyster catcher. Oh, I love oyster catchers. Everybody loves oyster catchers because they are so striking and they're funny little creatures. They like scuttle up and down the seashore. Or... So I wanted to get this back longer here. Okay, I've got to remember it's not, um, it's not a crow or a magpie, so it's not really, really long. But obviously it flies as well, so we need to have a nice tail in proportion to his body. Okay, I'm going to do blow. And then to finish it off, well, I might put a bit of smudgy smudgy there, actually. I could put some smudgy smudgy. Smudgy smudgy. A bit of hairspray. And I'm going to write, Oh, it's the catcher. There we go. And put your name on. So I'm going to put it down here. La, 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 la. So I think we've saved the best for last there. Now that was really refreshing for me to draw such a lovely um, bird for the last tutorial of Solway Coast A and B. How did you do with those characters? Now I did tell you they were going to be a bit tricky. We've got five very different characters here for the Solway Coast and you can also experiment with your different eyes and mouths and different styles, very, very different styles. I've managed to go and wash my hands because they were filthy after doing our lovely oyster catch. You can see how striking he looks compared to the rest of them. And that's because we've used very, very bold pastels. So you can experiment with your characters. You can maybe write some beautiful poems. You could do some posters for your Solway area. And I think I've been inspired today to go off and draw some more realistic birds because I've really, really enjoyed the challenge of doing these wonderful tutorials for Solway Coast. Now, hopefully you will keep up the drawing and practice, 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 because it is so important. Thank you ever so much for joining me again on my tutorial about the salt marshes. Take care, girls and boys. Well done, everyone.